Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this video, we're going to be continuing with ECS and dots. We want to be able to actually have objects interact with each other and collide in the world. And then rather than just colliding and bouncing off each other, which is already a default implementation with the physics system, we actually want to have some code run when they collide. So we can have objects with certain components do certain behavior when they collide. So we can, for example, with our rotation script, have it not be on the cubes by default, and then when they touch some other barrier in the world, they then gain that script and start rotating, which can be, you know, that can be replaced for anything, so maybe dealing damage, right? Um, when you touch something, you deal damage by adding a deal damage component or getting the health component, reducing the health, all these different things you can do, right? It's up to you and your implementation. We're going to keep it simple for this. The code's on GitHub down below. Let's get into the video. But of course, first I've got to thank my patrons, a special thanks to Beard or Die, Francisco Diaz, Rack, Yoris Letter, Hades Orko, Art Farrell, and Remy Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, the link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media accounts such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our website. If you could help us out by following on any of those or creating a free account over our website, it'd be greatly appreciated. Now let's get to the video. So as you're aware, we already have a system. It's a rotate system, and what it does is every frame, it goes through all entities with a uh, rotation Euler XYZ component and a rotate component and then it does this to it it adds to the uh, Y value it basically just spins the component uh, sorry spins the object with the component um, and that's the system right that's doing its job on those components so what we can actually do is we can add and remove those components to make that start and stop happening stop and start happening now everything with rotation is obviously going to have the rotation uh, Euler component but the rotate script is the thing that really does the actual rotation, right? That's the thing that you add and remove if you want something to be rotated or not. So what we want to do is we want to have these cubes um, not have the rotate component on at the start. And then when they touch something, we use collisions to actually add the component. And that's uh, obviously representing how to, you know, do on trigger enter or on collision enter, which is what you're used to doing in Unity. Okay, let's get to it. So the first thing to do is to make a ground plane. So we're going to go to 3D objects. We'll make a plane. I've got a new scene for this, by the way. Um, the lighting is a bit odd. Let me just uh, make this white lighting. There we go. So this plane can be the ground. I'm not going to bother renaming it. Okay, it's uh, got a transform, a plane, mesh renderer, uh, sorry, mesh filter, and then a mesh renderer. Completely normal. I'm fine with this. Um, let's go down here. And instead of a mesh collider for this, we're actually going to want to add a um, Unity physics shape. But before that, you need to make sure you've actually got the physics package installed, which I do. But to do that, you go to package manager, Make sure you go to uh, all packages, uh, show preview packages, and then search physics and you get this Unity physics. It's on the list. You want to install Unity physics. And once you're done, come back into Unity. I want to add a physics shape. Okay. Physics shape is what you're used to using as a physics, um, oh, sorry, as a collider, right? A box collider, sphere collider, uh, mesh collider. These are the different ones. Now you can actually still use mesh for this plane, which is what we were using. So let's go back to this and drag in the uh, plane mesh when it lets me do it in a second. There we go. So we've got the plane mesh. Okay. You got some other things on here you can set now. We're going to leave it as a non trigger because that means things will physically collide with it. Okay. So we'll save this. Now, the error we're getting is that saying it needs to be converted to ECS. So we need to add a convert to entity script. And then that error goes away. So, as you are probably well aware, when we press play now, the object's going to go away from our game view. It's gone now. And it's in our entity debugger. If we go to all entities, we have our plane as the ground. Okay, it's not really doing anything yet, but we'll go from there. Okay, so I've moved the camera, and what we want to do now is want to go and add a cube. Okay, so we've got a cube. We'll go uh, reset it back to 000, which is there apparently. So let's also put the plane back in 000. Okay, put the cube up a bit. Let's make it so it can drop. Okay, put it so it can drop at about a height of four. And then we'll just quickly move the camera a little bit back and a bit to the side. This will do for our for our purpose. Okay, so what we want is we want this cube to be converted to an entity, of course. It needs a physics shape instead of a box collider. So shape, uh, okay, there's our physics shape. It's a box. Now, if we go look in here, you'll notice this is what it looks like by default. They've actually added a bevel, which is up to you if you want to keep it like that. For the sake of this, I'm going to put it to zero. So it's just like a normal box collider. And this is what you're used to having. You've got your size center. Um, you can actually tweak orientation on here as well. You can set it as trigger and all the other things. There's plenty more on here than I'm ever going to cover or use, but it's there to allow you to do whatever you want. Okay. Once you've set that up, we actually want to give it a rigid body, which is now called, uh, well, using this physics system, is a physics body. So it's basically like rigid body almost. 
and this allows us to set the same kind of parameters so we got a mass dynamic all these other things i'm going to leave that and i'm going to go over here and i'm going to press play even though it's going to go to the game view anyway so it doesn't matter that i move the camera away but this object's going to fall and hit the floor okay so now we've got a normal physics interaction working just like you would in unity normally you add your rigid body and your colliders and there it works but obviously we want to do a bit more than this what we want is our cube to fall go through some kind of barrier of some kind some you know plane above this plane and it's going to be a trigger one so it doesn't stop on it it just falls through it and then when it falls through we'll actually add the rotate component to the thing that it falls through and then it will hit this ground and it'll just be rotating because it's got the rotate component on it okay that's the goal for this video so let's go to our plane we're going to duplicate it and we're going to move it up a bit so we're going to put it to maybe two okay so it's like this and i'm going to say on this plane take it uh, make it not cast shadows okay maybe not cast shadows and for the sake of the material we could make it you know a different color it'll make it a lot easier to see so let's quickly go materials matte matte underscore plane we'll do for now we'll go apply it to here we'll make it transparent and turn down the alpha okay then make it um some other color okay so now we can see this collider here it's going to fall through i mean for the sake of this as well i kind of don't want the cube casting a shadow it looks a bit weird okay so this cube's going to fall through and it's going to start rotating so you see right now it's actually going to stop on the plane because we haven't changed the collider at all it's just going to fall and stop so we, we actually want this uh new plane so we'll call it the like rotate um applier applier i feel like it's i-e-r we'll go like that and then it's trigger okay and from making it trigger as i said it'll fall through but it'll still raise the trigger event so that we can use that to apply the rotate component later or by later i mean any minute now okay i'm just gonna move this up a little bit move the cube up as well to about six maybe and then fix the camera to be about here Control shift f and there we go we're actually going to have to create a tag and the tag is going to be put on this um plane and it's going to be the rotate applier okay so it's going to be a c sharp script the rotate applier okay now all that's actually going to do is just add on the rotate script and then obviously we could have it choose the you know default settings like we could pass in the actual uh, radians per second or whatever but as far as i'm concerned we'll just apply a hard coded amount it doesn't really matter okay we can just go for the current speed which is whatever we used what did we use in our other scenes right if we go to the rotating scene and pick up a cube we did 90 degrees a second so we'll go for that as well so let's go back to the collisions we'll hard code it as 90. so the rotate applier is a struct it's also going to go in the namespace uh dots tutorial dot i guess it's still it's still rotating related so i'll put it in the same namespace and it's an i component data now if you did uh if you did want actual data on here right if you wanted to choose how much to apply on the rotate then put that in here and you can set all that up but as far as i'm concerned we're just sticking it on and we're going to use the new generate authoring component to save the amount of code we have to write okay so we now go back over to unity let it compile and the rotate applier we're going to add the rotate applier component and we're just going to leave it like that to be honest i'll put the thing above the convert to entity so now when we press play and we go to our entity debugger you'll notice the rotate applier has the rotate applier uh where is it on here here it is the rotate applier component it just has no data and it's currently doing nothing on its own so we actually want to write a system now to apply the rotation okay okay so i set the script up we've got the rotation application system that inherits from job component system now the original way i planned on doing this was adding and well not removing in our case but yeah being able to add and remove components in the job the only problem is i've done a lot of googling and haven't actually found a way to add it inside a trigger job i know how to do it inside normal jobs but not inside here so for this example what we're actually going to do instead is we're going to do uh, roughly the same thing we're actually just going to say the cube has the uh rotate uh offering on it already with 90 de sorry with zero degrees per second so we're going to have it have the rotate component just with no rotation and then what we actually want to do is we want to 
modify the actual rotation amount in the uh, in here and then in the future when i figure out how to do it or if you can't do it yet when they allow you to do it then i'll update and do that okay so what we want is we want a job that inherits well let's let's do this first that implement sorry so we want a private struct and this is going to be the um i don't know the application job doesn't really matter it's internal so it's you know rel relative to this so it's the application job for the rotation uh, it inherits or in this case implements i trigger events job okay and a trigger events job if we do control dot enter has an execute that passes through the data on the trigger event okay so this is what we're going to use to essentially say um okay change the actual rotation amount change the spinning velocity what do we actually call it oops what did we call it we called it the degrees per second we want to alter that in this execute function we're also going to need another function um, in here. Let's just control dot the job handle on update. Okay. And this is going to wait, override. There you go. So in here, we want to create our job. So we're going to say var application job equals a new application job. So application job. And then any data we need to pass in goes here. Okay. If we need to pass anything in, which we will. And now we need to return the application job. We need to schedule it like usual, but this time there's three parameters rather than one. We need a simulation, a physics world, and input dependencies. So we've got the simulation, comma, physics world, comma, and then we can pass in the input dependencies. So to get the other two things, we need to cache them. So we're gonna make a variable for the build physics world. And we need to make a variable for the step physics world. Now this stuff is usually done for you. Uh, in Unity because it knows what the physics world is and stuff and it knows about fixed update and the different step stuff. In this we have to pass it in. I guess it, the benefit is it gives you more control, also makes it more complicated. So eventually they might make this stuff simpler, like having you know the defaults and then you have to override it instead of just having to put all this stuff in by default. But we need to say step physics world simulation for the simulation. And then we need to add a reference variable to the build physics world dot physics world. And this is what you need to do a trigger job, semicolon on the end. There we go. So the last thing to do is actually just write the logic for the execute. So what we want to do is we want to, uh, this trigger event gets like, th this execute function gets called for every single trigger in the game, right? Every time two things collide with triggers, um, or well, just collide in general, this will be called. Now what we want is we want to only care about things with certain components. That's the nature of ECS. You do stuff based on the components. So what we want in our case is we want to say, um, we want to have a, query here for what components we care about okay we're gonna need two so we want a public component data from entity we're gonna need one for the uh, rotate applier okay so the rotate applier group and then we're also gonna need the rotate component rotate group okay and then we're going to want down here to say the rotate apply group equals um, this is the let me just try and remember yeah this is a built-in function into the job component system where we can get component data from entity uh, not from entity yeah from entity even uh, and then we need to pass in the type which in this case is the rotate applier and then we need to change this it's also a comma not a semicolon there and this is the rotate group which is the rotate component like this okay so now it's got what it needs we can actually use it in here so what we want to say essentially is um this trigger event has uh, entities entity a and b the two things that collided so we want to say if uh entity a dot has component uh whoops no it's the other way around we have to say if and then what we care about is if the um rotate so we want to say if a is an applier and b is a rotate set the thing or the other way around right if uh based on which way a and b is you want to actually do the same thing essentially so if uh rotate applier dot has component trigger event dot entity dot entity a um so if essentially entity A is a rotate applier and if rotate uh, rotate group that has component trigger event dot entities dot entity B 
then we want to say essentially get the rotate and set it to a certain value right so we're going to say the rotate rotate equals um it's the rotate group and then the key the entity is trigger event dot entities dot entity b okay and then from this we want to say ro rotate uh, dot radians per second equals 90 okay and then also yeah, this is radians per second not degrees per second I remember it was like one point um, you know we can actually do the multiplication we say 90 f times by math dot degrees uh, dot radians like so well, that'll do for now right and then we actually want basically the same logic here actually no first thing uh, sorry final thing here is we want to say okay so the physics um well not physics actually we're uh, our rotate gr group yeah there we go and then rotate uh trigger event dot entity is that entity b is equal to rotate so we've changed some data on this struct but we have to actually set it back because of how structs work they're not reference types you have to actually set them back and then we want the same thing here but we want to say uh entity b and then this is entity a here a here a here and then uh that's it actually so now regardless of which way around it is if those two things collide we set the value okay um the last thing to do is actually just set these in on create. We want to actually uh, override on create. And we want to say that the build physics world is equal to world dot get or create system of build physics world. And then the step physics world is equal to world dot get or create system step physics world. And then I'm going to go put the update function up here. Okay, so now they're all done. I'm actually going to go give it a go. Uh, just before I give it a go, we've got to actually go back and make sure we tag the rotate applier group with read only, since we don't actually ever write to it. We just read has component. Whereas the rotate group, we actually do read and write. We end up setting back some data on it. So you have to tag it with read only. If you don't, you'll get compile errors. Well, sorry, you won't get compile errors. You'll get runtime errors. So before we test it, let's just duplicate our cube and then move it over here a bit and move it up and then bit to the side okay they're all just all over the place now okay let's press play and see what happens so they should fall and start spinning as they pass through the red thing okay well it kind of worked obviously uh when i pressed play their rotation actually got reset and then uh when it fell through they did start spinning so the whole the whole point is it works right as it goes through they actually we can write to the uh component and have them spin i'm not actually sure why when i press play the uh the rotation reset maybe i need to apply it somehow but it doesn't really matter to be honest for this case. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Now you can see how to uh, collide and write data onto the components. This is gonna be on GitHub, GitHub if you wanna go down below and find the code there. Uh, leave me video suggestions for future videos. Keep in mind, I'm not currently experienced enough with it and I don't think there's much, as much, enough documentation to really build a full ECS game just yet. But as soon as I'm confident enough to do so, I will be sure of that. Um, but yeah, feel free to give other video ideas, ideas down below, whether it's ECS or not. I'm looking forward to hearing those. If you like the video, leave a like and subscribe. It'd mean a lot. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye.